Hello there. Thanks for watching or listening to VIP Boxing's Bell to Bell podcast. We're on episode 152, whether you're watching on YouTube, listening on iTunes and Spotify. Thank you very much. And if you give us a review, good, bad, indifferent, we're not bothered. You know me, Steve. You know Feather at the bottom there, John Evans. Uh, tonight's guest, a, a familiar face on the circuit in the Northwest, tra does travel around the country and a uh, one of the, the mushrooming army of female license holders um, from Radcliffe near Manchester, um, Nat Lewis. How are you, Nat? I'm really good. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you for having me. It's good. It's good. John suggested you a couple of weeks ago and no better time than now, I think, particularly you, you, you're, you're a cuts person. You know, you're a hand wrap. You work corners. You work with Joe Gallagher. Are you still with Pat Barrett's boxers as well? Because I think the last time I saw you, you was at Patch Gym. I was doing some filming for Fight Zone, and some of the boxers were in at 10 o'clock, and they were doing a circuit with you before they trained with Pat. Yeah. Yeah, I do remember. Um, I'm not at Pat's anymore, as you say. I'm at Joe's, but I do keep in contact with the lads, um, and I'm still cheerleading them on. I, I know Zelf has got a big fight coming up in a few weeks and stuff. Lyndon was just out in Saudi. Um, still the number one fans and stuff, so... Yeah, that's um, Nat, Nat's been in some big corners already. I know yeah. we talk about some fights at weekend, but she's wrapped hands with Freddie Roach overlooking and been over there with Zelfa when he yeah, bought was out, Rocky Marvel. out in Abu Dhabi for Zelfa's uh, world title fight, doing the corner and stuff, which was really exciting. My highlight of my career, really. Yeah. Um, and I've been going since I started at Oliver's Gym in 2014, got my second license and, yeah, in 2015. You, um and then I went to Pat's and I got my manager's license there. But Pat was like, like, you're really good at wrapping hands, go for it. And then uh, yeah, just steamroll from there, really. Yeah. Who who did you I mean, before we go on to the pod, you know, we're gonna talk about cuts work later on. Just on hand wrapping, is there anyone yeah. particularly you picked it up from? I know Dean Powell, my great for the late great Dean Powell was a good, an excellent hand wrapper, and he picks a lot of his stuff up from watching Emmanuel Stewart and spending time with him. Is there anyone you you particularly followed for hand yeah. wrapping? Or who gave you tricks of the trade, or you just watched and you know it's, tried it's, to mirror? It's really interesting that you asked me that. So I've I've watched a lot, a lot of really great cutsmen have given me their time and I'm so thankful because not a lot of people like to give away the tricks to the trade. Yeah, I was going to mention that later on cuts, yeah. Yeah, so there's uh, Ian Jumbo Donson. Yeah, uh, I learned a lot from him. Um, and then I've spent some time with... Um, I can't remember his name, I'll come back to him. Um, and then I've picked up stuff from uh, Tommy Mer forgotten his surname not very good I refer to my notes in a sec um and then i picked up just uh, uh just from being at small hall shows so i take a bit from you and a bit from you and stuff i love watching rosamba i love watching um freddie roach uh, i love watching kerry Kays. i've taken little bits from them all really and then made it my own um and i'm i, I say i'm happy with my style that i use at the moment but i'm always changing i'm always adapting and trying new things However, the what I learned the most actually came from Scott Quigg, um, which is really funny because you don't really think to ask the boxers, but getting their views on stuff, um, they're in there. They're the ones that are fighting in the deep waters, the 12 rounds and stuff. And he gave me a, a few little tips uh, as to how he likes it and what's, what makes it more comfortable for him and stuff. Um, and that really helped. And I think he actually learned from Freddie Roach himself, so... Um, yeah, it's always good to to get feedback from the boxers and then um, have their intake as well. I was going to ask you that. Do 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 you have like a set way of doing it? You know, when, when the fighter puts the hand out, do you have a set thing, or have you learned that Zelfa likes a little bit more on his wrist, or does Lyndon like a little bit more, a little bit that, tighter? Do you, do you have like a yeah. different thing for each fighter? Absolutely. Zelf is not too fussy. Lyndon's not fussy either, but he doesn't like his thumb wrapped. Right. Um, or he doesn't like it tight around his thumb and stuff. Um, it's really good when you build a relationship with a boxer where you get a good rapport going and you do them often because then um you can you can do it you know how they like it and it, it's it's easy to do. 
Um, a lot of the times at the small horse shows where I, I just turn up uh, the, uh, to promote to ask me to go down, I turn up and I don't know whose hands I'm doing. And then I get like a, a little queue going and stuff. Sometimes um, time wise, I have to limit what I'm doing or whatever and stuff. So I can't take the extra consideration as, as to what their preference might be. I just get it on there and get the job done. How fast can you wrap a hand? <laughs> so um, if I'm doing it properly and I treat each fight, even if it's a small whole four round show, I treat it like I'm doing a 12 round world title fight, but I've managed to get my times down to around about 15 minutes per hand. <laughs> last good. one before we start. Does it break your heart then when you see him just snipped off with a pair of scissors and thrown in my corner? <laughs> my, my raps, they want to cut off and save them for gym uh, afterwards. Gym. So. Oh, do you like it when you might do a journeyman for a, for a, a promoter at a small hall show, you might be doing, say, Jordan Graham. I've seen him do this before. He'll cut the wraps off meticulously afterwards and say, I'm saving them for next week. Does that give you a buzz? <laughs> Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. But the funny thing is, most of the time, they're not even bothered about having their hands wrapped. They'd go in there, their knuckle, you know, without anything covering the knuckles. Like, they're, they're really not bothered. So sometimes they're just like, oh, just get on with it kind of thing. But then afterwards, when I see them stuff them in the gym bag afterwards, and they like, give me a little nod and a wink. I'm, I'm made up. Eh? That, 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 that gives me pure happiness. Yeah, honestly, John, some around the, like these journeymen now, if they've had a really good rap, they get them cut meticulously and save them for next week and just wrap yeah. them and, they're not done it, uh, and see how long they can last. Right? They usually... like, you see a, lot, a lot of the lads in the gyms use them, don't they, every day, so yeah. we don't have to bother wrapping. We just tape up the wrist. So, yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's it. I get a lot of work just for do making gym wraps and stuff. I probably could like form a full-time business from it. <laughs> right. I'll tell you what, we'll fire. we're going to talk about your cuts work later on and, and cuts work for female license holders, but... We crack on. It's three minutes every round, and you might have to speak a bit here because round one, John's going to start us off. How good was Dalton Smith? I haven't seen the fight yet. To John, fire away. Part time, <laughs> Lillis. Right. Oh, I, I was, I was at Liverpool, mate. Right, but do you know what? I was on here last week, and I thought that was a big step up for Dalton Smith last week against Zapeda from people like uh, Sam Maxwell and Billy Allington and stuff. God, he was sensational. I love seeing stuff like that. Nat will probably recognise some of the signs. He looked a little bit nervous when he came out, Dalton. You know, when he stood on the stage and got in the ring. And straight away, Zapeda looked good. You know, you could see the threat was there. But Dalton just took his time, very calm, worked it out, worked out what to do. And just, well, the body shot. You must have seen the finish, Steve. Yeah, I've seen the finish, yeah. When he sort of delayed, I've seen That's all I have seen. Oh, and Dalton Smith looked world class. And that's what we want to see. We want to see. It would have been. It was so much better than him just blowing away an old washed up Zapeda. And it was much better than him getting involved in an exciting fight where you're still unsure about it. But yeah, he just solved the problems, set his own problems, and knocked Zapeda out. And it, it was brilliant. Loved it. No. Yeah, I thought I thought he picked his moments really well. Um, through a variety of shots, both hands. I think he looked like top class. Like. Really enjoyed watching that fight. Yeah, I um, I was I haven't seen it, but I, mean, I think with Dalton, I didn't think his career had stagnated far from it. But when he was leaving, knocking people out, then first, you know, when he was under ten fights, I thought he was the best prospect in the world under ten fights. And then sort of, he didn't labour, but he had a harder time than expected in two or three fights, like the Billy Allington fight, for example, where he was dragged into that twelve round, you know, fight. Just, Billy's style just didn't suit him at all. And suddenly he's had that win and he's there now. And what was good fun was Eddie Irm about talking about Adi, Adam Azim afterwards, you know, really, really uh, put it on him to him in no <laughs> uncertain terms. But we're not going to see that fight, so. No, he laid it on really thick, didn't he? Can you he's imagine right. what... Eddie's, Eddie's right, you know, don't yeah. you just say we're not having the fight, we're not ready. Yeah. Can you imagine, I bet, I know we're not going to see the fight, but I bet all Azim's team and the people at Box were watching it, just looking for a a weakness, looking for yeah. something oh, that you know, maybe we could take it. And straight away, he was that good that I, I think that's probably right down at the bottom of their agenda now. I think it'll go pretty quiet. Yeah, it will do. Round two, um, Hidden Gems. As I didn't see um, Dalton Smith's world-class performance weekend. I was at them. Um, Liverpool Grand Central Hall for the VIP show. Um, and I was start, got me thinking afterwards, small hall fighters that have the X factor who not many people know about. Now, I'm talking about Logan Richardson. 
who absolutely iced Jake Harrison in five rounds. Um, I've made a couple of his fights before, and talk about never seeing something coming. There's something else, you know, he dropped rounds to Keenan McAfee, Jake Pollard, Nabil Ahmed, but James Russell manages the shows for Steve Wood, ran me the day before and said, this kid is just so relaxed and oozes confidence. He got in the ring just smiling as if to say, I'm not going to be denied. And after he just blew me away. He was so excited. I'm not here saying he's going to be world champion and all that, but he is going to be such a good little TV fighter and he is just going to be in great fights. And I just think it's brilliant. A kid's come from nowhere, was expected to go the same way as um, Jack Dwyer did, who Jake Harrison beat to win the central area bantamweight. And he was just another level. And that, sh- that fight ending shot, what well, the two shots, that the knockdowns were, were, were spectacular. I'm gonna have a, we're going to have real fun watching this kid over the next few years. He's only 23 as well. Anyone else for you two? I've got two names I'd like go to throw on. in the ring. Um, I, Clark Smith, he is a middleweight. Um, he's six and oh, five and oh, six and oh. Uh, really cool character. Um, he reminds me of Canelo. Um, very smooth, sophisticated, a real crowd pleaser. You know, you just you 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 you're, you're not like um, panicked by what he's doing. It just is not is not hot. Um, it's not easy to frustrate. And the second one, now Brown, I think is 11 and 0. I want to um, on the th- Johns. Be... What's that? Now, go on. So I'm, I'm talking to myself aloud there. Oh. <laughs> so, Niall, I think he was um, number one in the country for um, high boxing um, and then switched to uh, boxing, uh, switched to pro boxing um, a few, just n- not too long ago. Uh, but he's definitely one to watch. Um, very cool, very collected, um, fantastic style, really aggressive, can come forward, can go back, can do anything really. Uh, but it's really uh, pleasurable to watch and a real crowd pleaser. I think yeah. one of yours I, was Niall named would, there, John. Niall would have been one of mine. I like Niall. And like you say, he's very <laughs> cool and calm, isn't he? So I'll pick two more. Um He's still under the radar, but no one knows him yet. I think Josh Holmes is really good. Yeah. Josh Holmes, yeah. I like yeah. Josh Holmes. Very good, yeah. And the other very, one, who no good. one's mentioned yet, but he, it's just a matter of time, is Mauro Silva. Oh, oh yeah, uh, Paulie's kid, yeah. Paulie the Silva's lad, yeah. Ma- Mauro knows he's good, very confident, very talented. Very. Grown yeah. up. When I first knew Mauro, he was a, a pudgy little kid. Now he's a... Full blown solid middle. Yeah, oh, he's, he's all a, man now. Yeah, all man. He's got a real nasty streak to him when he fights as well, which I like. Vicious, oh, yeah, Mauro Silva would be my other one. Yeah, you got knocks a bit there, John. But you had to think on your feet there because Noel <laughs> Brown, I know, would have been <laughs> one of yours. That's what I was mumbling oh, no, to myself to the there. Post. <laughs> John, John often mentions Noel Brown on here. He suddenly yeah. slips. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, I like Noel. He's a good lad. He's yeah, a good but, lad. Um, and did you have, have you, have you, have you seen the fight the weekend, the, the Logan Richardson fight? Yeah, I watched interest. it before. I've just done something on boxing yeah. scene on it. Logan deserves a shout. Spectacular. Yeah. Going to be it's in like good fights. like a little white Mike Tyson from Hull, isn't he, at Bantamweight? Yeah. He's, he's going to be in good fights, cousin, isn't he? Yeah. He's, if, he's, if he's given the right fights by the Clements who manages him, he is going to be in some real fun fights the next, the next few years. And, you know, fantastic that for him the other night. Um, round three, Nat, you're going to start us off. You want to talk about a significant cut to, there's been in boxing over the years? I do, I do. I'm excited about this. This is, this is a, it cuts get me, get me uh, excited. So, uh, the first one is, do you remember 2019, Tyson versus Otto Wallen? Yeah. Do, uh, anybody remember the cut? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. You can't, so you can't forget it, can you, when you've seen it? <laughs> yeah. Third round, um, I think uh, Wallen lands a um, a very clean left hand uh, on Fiori's right eye, opens immediately, and it starts off, it's bad to begin with, it's about three inches, um, and um, if the fight gets stopped there, then Wallen wins by TKO. Um, round five, Titan gets cut twice more, so there's way more blood and everything. Um, I think there's one above the brow, one on the eyelid. Um, and by the 11th round, the cut's like doubled in size. It's six inches thick. Uh, the cutsman is not his usual cutsman. I think he stepped in last minute. Is a guy called uh, George Capitilio. Yeah, I can't what, pronounce yeah. his name, yeah, but it's it's some, 
Um, yeah, so um, he basically um, does the jobs and stems the flow with the adrenaline, which is um, like, um, like um, um, it restricts the blood flow. So it, 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 it stops the swelling, it st stops the bleeding uh, by constricting the blood vessel. And um, Tyson basically says, says this guy saved his career, uh, quick thinking, calm hands. Um, did his job, um, kept the, kept the fight going. That's the cutsman's main job is to get get the boxers for the next round. Uh, and to this day, they still keep in touch because it meant that much to him, keep him in that fight. Titan ended up winning all around fantastic. Um, so that's my first one. My second one is I'm just going to find my paperwork because I've done a little bit on it. Um, and hang on one set. I've lost my paperwork. Okay. Um, oh. anybody remember this one? Uh, <laughs> uh, I can't pronounce his name very well. So, uh, Badu Jack, I'm saying it correctly. The action, oh yes! Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh! Right. So this is probably the worst one I've ever seen, Marcus and I'll Brown. tell you about yeah. what's that. Marcus Brown was the Brown, opponent. Was yeah. That's yeah, it. So um, put down his forehead. That's the one. So it's like an accidental head clash. I think it was the the eighth round. Um, and it opens up and um, basically uh, Brown's then just working on it. So by the 11th round, everybody's soaked in blood. Um, so by the 10th round, you could actually see his skull and you could see the actual cut opening and closing. It was like pulsating. There was that much blood coming out of it. Um, I can't remember the, the the cutsman's name, but he's like proper old school. He's got the swabs dangling out of his mouth and all the stuff that you, like, you would like cringe at now and everything. Um, and uh, I watched an interview with um, with uh, Badu Jack afterwards, and um, he had to have 132 stitches, three layers of stitches. He lost, it was either two pounds or two pints of blood by the end of the fight. The doctor was saying, like, I don't even know how you were like, walking, never mind fighting. Um, he did lose the fight and stuff. Um, it's a bit controversial because afterwards... Um, like it, it, uh, the it wasn't going to win basically. So the it was obvious by by everybody's scorecards that the the um the fight probably should have been stopped because there was a slight risk uh, of optical nerve damage, which is career ending for any boxer. So, uh, but it just goes to show, um, like you 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 the the faith you put in your cutsman uh, to get you through to the next round. Yeah, I remember Johnny Armour, um, bantamweight on the sky shows in the um every mick williamson's obviously yes. he's famous for what he did with with ricky, ricky. but the the work he, he done with johnny armor was sensational every fight he saved him every yeah. single fight if johnny armor would have to walk in the gym look in the mirror shadow box he'd need stitches it was incredible his skin was, yeah. like tissue, skin was tissue paper johnny yeah. armor, wasn't it? every fight <laughs> <laughs> and it, there's a couple I remember. Damien Kelly, who could really fight his eyebrows. Flyweight, Irish open. flyweight. With a, yeah. He was a sensational boxer, but his eyebrows used to open on every fight. But the one that always sticks in my mind, it could have ended Ricky's career. And it was over in Detroit. Second fight. Gilbert Second Hughes. or third fight. Second round or first round. he done first in the round, next round. Yeah. The, kid, the kid was way better than they expected. Ricky got hurt and his eyebrow ripped open in the first round. And we had three minutes to stop the fight because... Uh, I think Billy Graham was actually on cuts yeah. that night. That's when and, they uh, bought him. Realized they weren't, they realized this is going to stop the fight. You know, Ricky, you've got to knock him out in the next round. And high pressure, he went out and got rid of him, got rid of Kiros in the next round and stopped him. But yeah, I that's know. the biggest cut I remember. I know we're overrunning, so I'll just give one more. What about Mason Cartwright, that cut lip against Darren Tetley for one? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's right. Um We'll get in, <laughs> yeah. We'll get in trouble for overrunning from from oh. Lee there. But round four, we're over to you, John. Your favourite madman. Ah, oh, yeah, I love Florian Marku. <laughs> I, I, love him. I know we've we've spoken about him on here before and various fights we'd like him to be put into, but I I just love him. He, he's a lunatic. But <laughs> he doesn't just give empty words, Florian. He actually backs it up. And I think if you offered him any of these big fights, if you offered him Josh Taylor. If you offered him, you name it, Conor Ben, Florian Marker would run to the ring to fight these guys. I, I think he's as good as his word. Uh, he's got a tough fight this weekend. He's fighting Chris Congo. The atmosphere will be wild because Marku brings his people, doesn't he? Um, and you know he's going to have a fight. 
if Congo's getting to him, he might lose his temper a little bit and you never know exactly what's going to happen. But I tell you what, he'll fight to the very end and I like Florian Marku. I'm, yeah. I'm in his fan club. Yeah, I'm excited yeah, think... for the whole... Sh Sorry, go on, please. Oh, no. I, yeah, I was just going to say, I, I, I think I'm so excited. He's so exciting to watch and he's got, like, this really adaptable pro approach to, like, anyone is fighting and like he, 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 he I feel like he thinks on his feet and that's what makes him so exciting like he's, he's just um uh, the speed the power the aggression yeah I um you know what I've heard all sorts of tales about him what's true I don't know I've heard tales of him wanting straighteners in the gym outside the gym at Grant Smith with I'm not going to say the boxer who gave him a hard time in sparring I haven't actually just Take the gloves off. Let's go outside and have it. I've heard stories like that about it. I think John has so, but we don't know if they're true. It's alleged they happen, but he's erratic. He's inconsistent. You don't know what he's going to do next. Um, that's why John, I think, most probably likes him. Look, Congo's lost to Echo Esserman and Michael McKinson. They would both be favourites to beat your favourite madman, John. Yeah. So I'm going for Congo to beat him this week. <laughs> Yeah, he might well do. He might well do. And I've spoke, I've spoke to both these guys recently, and Congo is cold as ice about this. He says when Marku's around him one-on-one, -on -one, you know, when we're doing these press things, he says he's quiet as a mouse because he knows he can't do that with me. So it'll be interesting to see what Florian will get this week, whether he really is a little bit intimidated by Congo because he knows he's good, or whether the old Florian comes out. And I think I know, it, I think I know where I'd put my money. Go on, where are you going? <laughs> I think I, uh, I'll put my money on Congo to win, but I think we'll get the old Florian. I think he'll make a show of it this week. Where Where are you going, Nat? What where, where, where are you predicting? I am going with the popular opinion. I'm going with Congo. Um, I watched the um the um sit down interview thing where they talk, and they both seem really calm and collected. Uh, and so you can tell the bad blood between them and uh, and everything. But yeah, my money's on Congo. Brilliant, brilliant. I'll tell you what. Um. We'll move on to round five. And this, Bill, I'm, I'm really excited for this. So on Sky, he's the Sunday boxing on Sky. Fabio Wardley um, against Clark for um, British and Commonwealth heavyweight title. Uh, you look at the you know the background of their careers, and Fraser Clark's got to be, a, should be a massive favourite. But Wardley just got that momentum. Clark still hasn't shown it for me as a professional. You know, what I was expecting him to do. I remember, I remember him in the last few years. Of his, he, it's almost treaded water, his career. And look, if he can turn back the show what he was, he can win it. But I've got a feeling Fabio Wardley's going to continue to roll and, and beat him this weekend. I really like Wardley. He gets better of every fight. He's got a bit about him personality-wise, the way he sells himself. Um, it's just something I like about him. Really, really good. You know, that it's just the whether he's in a suit or dressed in a track suit, he looks the nuts. I just like him. I want to be Fabio Wardley when I'm grown <laughs> up and I'm a big boy. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. I, I'm on Wardley. I, there's something about him. He's got like, um, I think heavyweights need to have a bit of an ego about them and a bit of an aura. And Wardley's got it. You know, when you're around him, he, he talks very well. He obviously thinks about what he's saying. He yeah. doesn't just spit words out. Very clever guy. And he's improving so much. Um, I, I didn't like how they were writing off his white collar career as well. He, and he, yeah. he gave me one of the best quotes I've heard for a long time. And he said, yeah, you can be a top amateur. And he said, you might fly to Azerbaijan and get beat off a Russian. And you get back the following week and your mates say, how did you do? So oh, I lost. And we all just shrug the shoulders and yeah, he's lost another fight. He said, if you get knocked out in a white collar, you go in the pub the following week and the fellow that beat the shit out, you stood at the end of a bar. He said, that's not ideal. That's a different type of... That's a brilliant analogy. <laughs> I'll tell you what, they, from what, from what, like I'm hearing, and what I'm hearing, John, about the access people are getting to him, if that was recent in the last few weeks, you've done very well to get to him from what I'm hearing about the, how he's being hidden away by his management. Oh, but there a, you that go. Was a, that was a few weeks ago. That. Yeah, you did well, because I don't think anyone's getting near him at the moment. Anyway, what's your views on the fight, Nat, this weekend? So I'm really excited for that fight. Uh, first of all, great undercard as well. Um, second of all, um, it's it's one of those heavyweight fights you're looking forward to because I, I, it, it kind of is 50-50. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not too sure. Um, obviously, um, Clark's got the good amateur career. 
Uh, Wardle is, you know, he, he, he made quite a statement when he stopped uh, David Adelaide in the seventh round. Um, I, they're both fresh, both very proud boxers. Um, but if I had to put my money on it, I'd probably go Wardley. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just wonder. We, uh, I just like the guy. Does you, you, you can, you know, the way he speaks, everything about him. He, he, he's pretty cool, isn't he, John? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's great company. Yeah, and um, but also, he's very amiable. Comes out with great stuff. I want on a foot with him, to be honest. No, as well. that's what I mean. That is that sort <laughs> of guy, as yeah. well, which you need, which a heavyweight yeah. needs. I didn't know hurt. you could swear on this podcast. That's yeah, great. Do what you want. We do what we want on this podcast. John does what he wants. I'll do what I want. But I'm, 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 in a, I'm in a calm mood tonight. It's usually me, Efren and Jeff, but I'm calm tonight. Anyway, this is your your turn again in that. They're going to talk about females who work on cuts. And, of course, oh, there's been quite a lot of attention because uh, Liz Norris the other night for the job um, she did with Ashley Lane in his um, upset win against Chris Burke at your call to become... Um, British was it Br British champion the other night. Also, before we go on talking cuts, got to mention Amy Amy Pugh, the referee. Um, yes, great to Incredible. see. She's, she's had two weeks running at your call. Absolutely brilliant the way the ball protected her from media. Because if people had known she was going to be going into the ring as a referee last week, the pressure mm -hmm. on her would have been immense. That been unfair on everybody involved at your call. So. Well done to Absolutely. the board and all the best to Amy for the future. But you talk to us about females who work on cuts there, Nat. Yeah. So um I think the one uh, the the ladies that I'm gonna talk about now, um they they were were quite under the radar. I think um like after a, a big fight, and uh, I'm gonna mention all the title fights that we've all been included in, uh, we tend to go home and we we watch the rewatch the fights. Uh, and then we assess ourselves. We see uh, what we didn't like uh, that we did. Uh, that we don't want to make the same mistakes next time. We, we see what we did like. Um, and then we work on self-improvement and self-development and stuff. Um, I think uh, we're a quiet bunch and uh, we don't like to showboat or anything like that. So I think a lot of, of the time our, our work goes unnoticed. Uh, and probably most people listening uh, won't be aware um, there's two that I'd like to focus on that are in Great Britain um, here with us. Uh, there's Laura Holling. Uh, she was uh, uh, she she works with Dave Allen um, and oh, I know Laura. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. The most loveliest, most down to earth yeah. person you could ever meet. Um, so she's only had a license for two years, but in those two years, she has done over fifty two corners. Um, she has done the European European title fight. She did hands and cuts uh, for Stevie Levy. Oh, when she beat um, Dorota Norak the other week, yeah. That's it, yeah. Um, and um, she's done a central area um, for Darren Tetley. Um, and she's done over three title fights. So she's doing cuts, um, she's wrapping hands, and um, she's obviously very present in the corner um and she's um like a credit to the sport um then there's christy raby now she's uh most known for doing mma she's uh been on the scene for about three years um she's done hundreds of hands uh because obviously you know in the mma they they stay at the back of the house and they wrap 40 hands it, a yeah. night or something crazy um, obviously, with it being MMA, she's done multiple cuts. She's done every shape um, possible: zigzag cuts, straight cuts, noses, ears hanging off, um, teeth missing, broken fingers, broken toes, the whole lot, the whole shebang. Um, but not just the MMA. She's also done a British title, a Commonwealth title, Welsh title, a Welsh title. Um, She's done a Muay Thai world title um, and countless MMA titles as well. Um, so she's in there doing her work, getting stuff done, handling stuff, um, and also a really lovely lady. And she still fights, uh, which is nice. also really, really nice credible and stuff. Well. Yeah, yeah, she's, she's just awesome. multi-talented. Yeah. Uh, and then there's there's uh, Katrina Luzer. Uh, she's from Austria. Um, she's a does mostly MMA, but does do boxing as well. Um, I can't even tell you. If you look at her Instagram account, the cuts that she's done, the most juiciest, most beautiful, bloody faces. <laughs> she, 
snatches them up and she sends them back out. You don't even know. They don't even know they've been cut. Um, <laughs> like if if somebody was going to do my corner, I'd I'd want her there. Uh, and she's she's a she's a lovely person, and she, she's a real cheerleader for all the other women in the sport. Now, she's it's... been doing it years and years. Uh, and then there's me. Have we got enough time to talk about me? You talk about you. We've got about six minutes I'm left. Obviously, I'm the most so... important person. Yeah, you're the <laughs> guest. And tell us about yourself. Sell yourself. Um, <laughs> so I've done uh, British title fights. I did Marcel Braithwaite's hands and cuts uh, last year, last March in Dudley. Um, I have. Um, oh God, I've I've done over 187 corners. Um, God knows how many hands. Um, I have done. Um, I I've, I've been in the corner. Um, countless titles, Commonwealth, British, um, one English. I've done. Um, European was with Zelfa for his European title fight. I was in Abu Dhabi with Zelfa for his world title fight. Um, loads of uh, Lyndon's title fights, his defend, uh, defense um, was there for uh, both of his uh, fights um, in London against Yard. Um, I was supposed to be going to South Africa tomorrow with Wayne, you know, Wayne Smith. Yeah, yeah with uh, because Marcel. Marcel's, Marcel's got his t- uh, title fight. Uh, Pat can't go um, so because Zelf is fighting in two weeks' time or whatever. Um, so, um, I was going to step in, but I can't because I've got work commitments. Um, so I can't go. Um, but I would have been doing cuts and stuff there. So that would have been my my second world title fight. I've been involved in the corner. I've also done more uh, world title fights, but I've not I've not done. Um, I, I might have not done the hands of the cuts. I just might have done the corner and whatever and stuff. So I got a really large handle, um, a really large amount of title fight in a really short space of time. Um and um yeah it's um it's something that um I really enjoy and I've been in boxing since two thousand two thousand and fourteen um and to begin with I didn't quite know what avenue uh I was I was going down uh because as I say I had a manager's um I had a manager's license I had um my second license I could do the coaching or whatever and stuff but it's cuts for me cuts and hands. Um, and yeah, I, I get to all the shows and uh, people know me now and stuff. I, I'm just really thankful. I'm in a really great position uh, and I enjoy my job. Well, that's it gives it. me your... pleasure. But you know what? You mentioned uh, you, you run off some female names there. And as we're getting yes. more and more female boxers, it's good that there's more and more female license holders. Now, too, who's making a name for us. Obviously, the trainers, you know, John, Sue Smith over in Leeds with Josh Warrington and Sean O'Hay, oh, she's, doing, she's doing brilliant with the amateur club as well. She had a go. Um, she, she, I don't think I, I'm not sure how long the amateur club alliance has been going, but one of her juniors won a silver medal at the nationals yesterday. Yeah, brilliant. yeah. Have you seen her holding pads? Yeah, I, I haven't. John, I haven't. I've heard of her. I know she does a lot of the pads with Josh and brilliant, brilliant to watch. Yeah, it's something that's more accepted in MMA, isn't it? Like. From, from doing all the days grappling, I, I've been twisted in knots off people like Rosie Sexton 10 years ago. Yeah. And it was just widely accepted that yeah. Yeah. women can fight, you know, it's the, and women can teach and stuff, but it's taken a bit in a little while in uh, boxing. But I don't but think... Put, maybe no I'm, debate about it is that if you can yeah. stop a cut, you can go in a corner. It's, it's like if I'm... If I'm shell, anything you else know, about it. Maybe I'm sheltered on it and just switch off, but when I see Sue take someone around for... Sh- Sean, it don't go through my mind that Sue Smith's in the corner, like she would take Jake Smith around the journeyman occasionally, or she'll go with, you know, she's gone with yeah. some of she with Ash Raymond. She was the, the other week when he fought Jab, she was the main person around him in the corner. Yeah. I don't think any different when she jumps in the ring and see and see her because you know um, they've got ability, be it trainers, you know, cut, cut, wrapping. Cuts the lot, so I don't think any different to it. I, I, I think boxing's. I think boxing's the ultimate sport. If you can do it, you, you stick around. If you can't do it, you get found out pretty quickly, and you get shunted out. That's I'll it. I tell you what, ultimate. though, John. If you we've spoken on here. We, we've spoken privately on here on, on the phone, John. We, we've 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 sussed at who we thinks a con man and all that in boxing. Who we believe <laughs> we speak pro. We haven't said anything about a female yet, have we? So there no, you go. Not, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> what does that say? That's it says it all. 
<laughs> right. I'll tell you what, for someone who was nervous, you've, you've taken us down to one minute, 20 seconds left. So you can t you can certainly talk that. Anyway, we've come to the end of, um, yeah, really enjoyable 30 minutes or so on VIP Boxing's Bell to Bell. John, great to have you on as always. But most of all, thank you, Nat, for joining us. And we'll come back in a few months and get you back on. And uh, good luck with you. I think you've got personal training clients tonight. So you get through and put them through their paces. <laughs> thank you so much. I've really enjoyed it and look forward to doing it again soon. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for watching. But most of all, thanks to you, Nat, and to John. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. For all boxing info, news, and latest interviews, Amateur and Pro, across and off, click and subscribe. VIP Boxing Promotions. Also, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook.